The Unteachables, Chapter 5, Mr. Kermit. Emma Fountain. I can scarcely believe it. Of all the classrooms and all the schools, she has to walk into mine. She's a time machine, that's what she is. The spinning image of her mother. It brings back memories I thought were buried forever. I can still see the engagement notice in the newspaper. Fiona Bertelsman and Zachary Kermit, the photo of the happy couple cheek to cheek, eyebrows perfectly aligned, smiling like nothing was ever going to come and rain on our parade. How innocent we were then, how blind, how foolish. It was all over in a heartbeat. The test, the scandal, the breakup. Since then, I've only seen smiles like that twice. Seven months later, when Fiona lined her eyebrows up with Gil Fountain in the engagement notices, and today, when their daughter, Emma, stepped through the doorway of room 117. Fate has a way of sticking it to you twice, resurfacing like a bad burrito. This morning was my second shot. Every day draws me 24 hours closer to early retirement, but the last lap isn't going to be a cakewalk. First Thaddeus in the Unteachables, and now Fiona's clone in the room next door. A living, breathing, bucket-filling reminder of the life I missed out on. If that poor kid tries to teach middle schoolers the way she ran her kindergarten classes, her students will have her throat open by Columbus Day. I should sit her down and explain a few things, but that would mean I care. <laughs> Caring is where the trouble starts. Hard experience taught me that. I didn't make it up to the cusp of early retirement by caring. I made it by keeping my head down, regardless of whether they give me honor, students, or unteachables, or the zombie apocalypse. All I have to do is endure. There are small satisfactions. The hiss of the air controller closing of the school entrance behind me as I exit the building. The crunch of my shoes on the bad pavement of the parking lot. The stab of pain in my sore shoulder as I open the ill-fitting door of my 1992 Chrysler Con Con Concord. The one Fiona and I bought to start our new life together. Sky blue, although now it's mostly rust. I don't know why I've kept it so long. For sure it isn't the money. The repair bills alone would have bought me a Lamborghini. I turn the key in the ignition. The motor coughs and dies. A few minutes later, the hood is open, and I'm staring in at who knows what. Suddenly, there's a screech of tires, and a pickup truck is reversing across the parking lot at top speed, hurtling toward me. My one thought is that if I'm crushed to death here and now, Dr. Thaddeus and the school district won't ever have to pay me for my early retirement. The pickup roars to a stop with its rear bumper six inches from my legs. Eyes blazing, I shout, are you crazy? The door opens and the driver gets out. I blink. It's one of my students. I know the unteachables are a rough crowd, but I never expected one of them to steal a truck and use it to try to kill me. Sorry, the gas pedal sometimes sticks a little. When my shocked expression doesn't fade, the kid adds, it's me, uh, Parker, from your class. What can I do to help? To start with, I rasp, you can stop reversing at 90 miles an hour. Why is a middle schooler driving at all? As he launches into a whole story about his grandmother, the family farm, and a provisional license, I conjure up a picture of him in a front row desk examining worksheets from point blank range like he's staring through a jeweler's eyepiece. Wow, that's a pretty old car, he tells me. I mean, mine's old, but yours is like... Classic, he squints at the name in raised chrome letters. It's a Coco Nerd Concord, I correct impatiently. Didn't anyone ever teach this boy to read? Never mind that. Any idea how I can get it started up again? Give Parker credit. He's better with cars than he is with words. He tinkers around under the hood, and pretty soon the motor is running again, although it's 
belching gray smoke all over the parking lot. Stop it! A silver Prius pulls alongside. The window is open. And through the billowing clouds, we can just make out Miss Emma Fountain. Turn it off! Turn it off! Parker rushes behind the wheel and kills the engine. She gets out of the Prius, waving her arms to clear the air. Don't you have any idea how much carbon is in that smoke? Mrs. Vardalos is the chemistry teacher, I reply, deliberately misunderstanding the point she's trying to make. I'm in charge of, well, you know which class I'm in charge of. I indicate Parker with a slight nod. I'm bucket filling, Parker tells her proudly. You know, helping Mr. Ribbit, I, I, I mean Kermit. Mr. Kermit, she asks, how old is that car? <laughs> Your mother picked it out, I inform her with an oddly defiant smile. Her eyes widened. Oh, wow, that's old. It's just that people didn't understand emissions back then. It was before everyone started putting the environment first, recycling, composting, installing polar plant, installing solar panels. A long speech forms in my mind about how this is a free country and it's none of her business what anybody drives or how old it is or what it spews into the atmosphere. But for some reason, I can't say it. Not to her. Not to the face that looks so much like Fiona's. She softens. Well, maybe you can keep it, but you definitely have to put in a catalytic converter. <laughs> it's on my list, I assure her. Right after a new floor for the back seat, just in case I ever have passengers. Parker peers into the back. Whoa, is that the ground? <laughs> Air conditioning, I supply tight-lipped. Uh, old school. Emma regards me with pity. On the plus side, she and Parker managed to get the motor running again, minus the smoke this time. Wow, Miss Fountain, Parker raves. You're really good with cars. I learned from my mom, she explains. She took a course in auto mechanics because she bought a real lemon once and her voice trails off as she frowns at the old Concord, connecting the dots. I swallow what's left of my pride. Thanks for your help. I'm positive that her first act after getting home will be to call her mother and say, Ma, guess what? He still got that car. The calendar appears in my mind. The magical date in June circled in gold sharpie. Only 172 more school days to go.